for over 30 years, I've had the opportunity to observe leaders and organisations up close, to see how they work, to see how they think, to see them in the throes of making decisions and considering options. And I've come to see it as a lot more than organisational management and structure and all of the usual rigmarole of management consulting. It, it's actually about the way that we as humans organise to achieve outcomes. Everything we see about us, everything we can see now, everything we use, everything we live with, is the result of the organisation of human labour. It creates the solid infrastructure, it creates a soft infrastructure that is the societies we live in. These are not accidents, they are made. They are made through deliberate effort, and they are made through inaction, through poor decisions, through inexpert execution, through personal triumphs, but ultimately through collaboration and joint activity. What we as humans experience as the day-to-day -day frustrations, as the reality of the world we live in, is the result of human labour. And what we're finding, and several commentators have noted, is that the organisation of human labour is failing us in the current environment. Stephen Covey, author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, observed in his book The Eighth Habit that personal effectivity is no longer sufficient in the knowledge economy. It operates at a higher level of complexity. And complexity is just one of the dimensions in which our operating environment is moving. It's the digital economy, it's cyber security, it's changing expectations of a populace with generational change, with higher aspiration, with diminishing trust. It's about the sheer complexity, the pace of change that is thrust upon us from globalisation, from technology, from a thousand sources. It is no longer possible to achieve outcomes through heroic effort and purely through the force of personal leadership. There are some exceptions. There are some unicorn businesses who have outpaced the traditional sectors, your Apples, your Googles, and everybody's spending a lot of time trying to go, well, how can we have some of that? But the truth is, we cannot become an organisation that is led by fiat, by a personality, by a singular owner, and I question very strongly whether we want to, and particularly when we look at society, Yes, in, in complex times, we are attracted to exactly that kind of strongman leader, but it is rarely a good answer. It is not sustainable. No human being, no leader in any scenario has the capacity to deal with the complexity of opportunity and threat that is present in the current environment. And yet, in a decade of unprecedented global opportunity and threat, large organisations are stagnating. Governments are losing trust. Institutions are losing trust. So the question for humanity is, can we 
increase the pace at which we are able to create the environment around us, the environment that we live in, to create our own existence? Can we keep pace with our own success? I've spent a lot of time with organisations and coaching the individual leaders and coaching their organisational practices, both in private and government, and watched as they stumble with the reality of making change occur, achieving consensus, not only making decisions, but continuing to make the right decisions day by day as a vision or an intention or a strategy is executed in environments that are continually changing and in situations where learnings must be taken. Integrated reporting talks about the fact that we have what are at best 20th century decision making and reporting tools to address 21st century challenges. I, I have put it that we, we still have the decision making infrastructure in our organisations that were good to identify, select and nurture the, the types of projects, the types of policies that were good for us 30 or 40 years ago, some unkindly say three or 400. And that decision-making machinery is still identifying, selecting, nurturing those types of projects. They're not the type of projects that we need today. Three or four or a, a finite number of large-scale projects does not work, does not serve us. We need to find environments that are constant learning, constant experimentation, where the potential human capital in our staff, in our citizenry, is put to effective use. There have been studies done about the level to which people feel that their personal capacity is being made use of in the organisations that they are part of. And the level of frustration is horrendously depressing. And that is not just at staff. And it is not just at middle management. And it is not just at senior leadership. It is at the board as well. Right through the whole organisations, people are unable to contribute what they feel their potential is. If we could create a frame where our human potential could be aligned to valuable outcomes through learning and experimentation in complexity, we would have the capacity as people to create environments that we aspire to. It is not a lack of understanding of the problem. I think we have been there, but there has been a lot of movement on that. We understand the problems of climate and society and equality, equity. But they're hard problems. And they involve collaboration, the effective organisation of human labour at a level that we're just not comp capable of doing, not competent to achieve. And that, for me, has been my finding that it is actually the level of competence to achieve the outcome is the critical factor in achieving the future for organisations, for people, for humanity. And so I looked into it. Because purely to talk about this without a solution made some very interesting conversations and some interesting writing and much interesting thinking, but wasn't sufficient to bring together action to upgrade the way that we work. So I sent myself back to school, I did a PhD. We identified a framework 
of governance practices because that is the language in which this can be understood by our corporate and government leaders, by the people who control the flow of capital in our organisation, by the in, 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 our, in our society, by the people who set regulation around this. The people who are actively trying to lead us to better futures. It had to come into their language. And what we found through the model and the use of measurement tools to see how effectively different organisations were through coincidence or good management executing this model, did it have an impact? And sure enough, within our study, the most significantly advanced exponent of this practice at large scale in Australia was 350% ahead of the market over a 10 year period. Sustained long-term consistent value creation that was not a fluke. It was about having the practices internally that allowed them to deal with complexity and allowed them to harness the knowledge and the contribution of their highly professional staff towards valuable outcomes in a highly experimental context. It works. Not only that, but it works to engage the leaders of those organisations who are not achieving that kind of success. And here I'm talking about chairman of the largest organisations in the country, politicians, departmental secretaries, heads of regulators, and the CEO of our largest CEOs and chairs of our largest investment organisations. They are recognising that we lack currently the models that allow us to organise ourselves to greater outcome. We lack the ability to recognise which organisations have the internal capacity to achieve this and which don't. We have the lack of capacity to identify which projects and initiatives have the internal veracity and, and um, structure and strength to be able to achieve their promise. We lack the management to be able to see our value creation in progress and thus to build confidence for ourselves, for our investment, for our stakeholders, for everybody involved, for the community of action. It is transparency and evidence and continuous learning and continuous measurement and continuous experimentation and continuous sensing of the changing environment around us that unsurprisingly leads to better practice. Having engaged at senior levels, we are now in the process of trying to bring this to collaborative effort. The only way that the practices of human organisation are going to be upgraded is through collaboration. They cannot be done in theory, they cannot be done by fiat. They must be jointly learned on a journey and we are forming that collaboration both across Australia globally to develop these practices and to implement them in the kind of language that our commercial and our government organisations and the leaders can deal with. The world we create for ourselves is a matter of our ability, our capacity to express a vision in the complexity, to be able to make it real and tangible, the future that we are working to. To allow people to see the meaning 
and the outcomes that are involved in the future that we are describing. Our ability to describe and to set measures of our future and to work reliably towards that future as we learn, as we experiment, as we change and as the environment around us changes sets the ability for humankind to describe and collaborate and organize to create the future we want. There is perhaps nothing more important than the systems of organization, of human labor towards our future outcomes. The work that we've done describes levels of maturity in decision-making, in value-creating capacity in the fabric of our organizations and our social cohesion. It identifies what I describe as the wilderness, which is perhaps where we are socially. Random wins, random losses, very poor cohesion between decisions that get made and the outcomes that people are looking for. Many of our large organisations are better structured than that. They're in a phase we identify as islands of excellence, large organisations, well resourced, great staff. When they put their mind to something, they're very good at it. But they just can't bring it together on a consistent basis. They become frustrated and frustrating. Performance is not what they would like it to be. Our champions from what we've identified are in a phase that we describe as integrated maturity. It's no one thing that they do, no single answer that is the solution to all of their problems, but the ability to bring together the capability that they have to align an effective outcome and make consistently better decisions at all levels of their organization on a sustained and continuous basis and it works. The phase beyond continuous improvement, continuously looking at the systems themselves, at the system for value creation what we're trying to do now, but on a continuous basis on all of the taxonomy of issues that go into an organization engaging from idea to value. Consistently seeing the throughput of its value creation and finding new and improved ways to work on the system of human organization itself. Given the environmental and social and technological change we see coming ahead of us. A failure to upgrade the infrastructure of human decision-making and organization will leave us with continued social issue with losers as well as winners with disruption and pain that goes with the revolution of change we can do better than that. We have human capacity and ingenuity to 
address these issues promptly and intelligently as and before they arise. The challenge is to harness that knowledge, is to get the organisation of human labour, human knowledge, human ingenuity, human capacity, human passion, to achieve the potential that we have within us. We know many of the issues, we know many of the answers. The biggest challenge is to bring that together in a consistent, sustained basis to aligned value creation to explicit vision an upgrade to the organization of human capacity the future is going to be more highly paced it is going to have more complexity is going to have more digital change and social unrest and problems with equality and environment and community our ability to operate effectively in organisations is not just a matter of competitive success of winners and losers. It is a matter of who we as humans are able to be. The societies we create, the life, the human experience we create for ourselves. Our leaders have what I call a future fiduciary responsibility. First and foremost in terms of their ease of engaging with these questions is what I call the core future fiduciary question which is for them to be able to assure to financiers, to the public, to their stakeholders the question are we optimally invested in our own future? Do we know what we're trying to do? Are we on top of the problem? But the subsidiary questions, if we did everything we were currently working on, who would we be? Is that who we want to be? And if we want to be something different, what do we need to be doing now to correct it? Do we have the rate of value creation capacity to achieve the objectives we have set ourselves and the expectation of the community around us? It is not an understatement to say that we are building a new way of organizing human labor that is appropriate for the knowledge economy, for the building of intangible value, for the creation of better, more inclusive, more responsive societies. The world we live in is created by us through action or inaction we are building the group of interested leaders and participants and it will be a large group who are interested in driving that collaboration and being part of creating human organization to create better human futures our work has created new perspective on the way that leaders and organizations are understanding the problems around them. With new perspective it is giving them room to consider and engage new classes of solutions and take 
new action that previously was not available to them. It is allowing people to engage in the deliberative creation of better functioning societies.